thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Higgs, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, I, I do want to say for honoring anyone else uh, that I have profound appreciation for Mr. Higgs and probably a profound dependency upon him also. He calls me every Sunday morning. <laughs> so if I'm ever late, you have to blame him. But we have a, a perpetual a communication, and I appreciate his interest, his knowledge of, of government and the community. His approach may not always be one we agree with, but he gets the job done. Let's give him a hand. I feel very honored to have been considered for this uh, this moment, and we certainly will thank God for Dr. Knight and for all of the members of the Human Relations, Human Relations Commission, for all of these very fine individuals at the head table here, and of course, uh, each of you throughout the, uh, the area. It's just a blessing to be here in Edgecombe County as the speaker for the Martin Luther King uh, breakfast. So happy to see my son, uh, Solomon's son, anyway. Oh, yeah, there he is. Uh, here today, and of course, my daughter-in-law, his wife. And uh, we're, we're just happy. I am Edgecombe County. And the reason why I say that, I was born here. Uh, and I've pretty much been here all my life and have not regretted uh, one moment of it. Uh, children went to school here, and uh, grandfather uh, farmed a piece of land here and established a community called Thorntown, which many of you may know about. And so I have my roots here, and so it's, it's very humbling to me to be able to talk to, uh, to my people, and I'm not going to talk a, a long time. Uh, because uh, it doesn't really take a long time when you're talking about such a powerful man, man as uh, Dr. the late Dr. Martin Luther King. In fact, I want to hasten to uh, to my subject by just looking at uh, something that he said, and I had considered this even before coming. But on the bulletin, it says uh, the most urgent and persistent question is, what are you doing for others? What are you doing for others? And, and that's essentially what I, I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about others. Um, I recall reading of the uh, late director of, uh, and founder of uh, Salvation Army. He was sent a telegram many years into his life when he had aged, and it was pretty apparent that he would not be able to make the annual event. And they sent a telegram to him as to what he wanted to say as they celebrated. And he sent them back the shortest telegram they had received. It simply said, others. And that's what it's about. It's about others. And so we come today to talk about a man who lived for others, the late Dr. Martin Luther King. And we would do well to, to follow his steps because he followed the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul often said to his followers, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. And whenever you follow Christ, you're going in the right direction. Someone may think it's a, a little late in the, in the game to, to do some of the things that are being proposed uh, nationally and internationally and locally. Uh, 
I think it's a little late in game that perhaps we uh, uh, we may have to even give up on some of the initiatives of human rights. But if you thought that uh, up until last night, you should have uh, uh, changed your mind if you were watching the game between the Saints and the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you have given up, left the stadium, and uh, uh, gone on and felt like it's over, uh, uh, the Lord allowed us to see something last night. But no, it's not over until it's over. Amen. We were in my study last night after a great event, uh, our Deacon's Candlelight Service. Congressman D.K. Butterfield did an excellent job uh, speaking to us last evening. And uh, so we were kind of lounging around in my office, uh, uh, Reverend Jenkins' wife, uh, my son's wife, and Dr. Professor Tyson. We were really into the game, and it kept going up and down. And finally, when the Saints kind of turn it over what we thought the last time. They started leaving. But I had a few things I had to do, and a few notes I had to write, and I left the TV on, and then I saw a dig as he caught that, that ball. I got on the phone and I said to them, y'all left too early. <laughs> Amen. And, and in this struggle, there's some people who leave too early. That's right. Uh, uh, this has been a, a long struggle, oh, yeah. and it will continue to be a long struggle. It is about uh, life. In fact, sometimes we feel like it's about eternity. And it's connected to uh, many other struggles, even our Lord Jesus Christ, as he came to this earth, he said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. In fact, I want to I wanna kind of chime in on one of the uh, stories that he told because he's a great storyteller. One day, uh, a lawyer comes up to him and asks him uh, what was the greatest commandment. And he uh, moved to tell him, love, uh, you know, the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And then he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And the lawyer, wishing to justify himself, uh, said, who is my neighbor? It appeared that that's, that's the question that Jesus wanted him to ask. And Jesus took him on a journey down a long, meandering road, a road with many entrapments and bends that allowed for robbers to hide and, and to uh, disenfranchise people who tra traveled down that road. And he said there was a man who was going down the Jericho Road and he fell among the thieves. They beat him and they robbed him and they left him half dead. Yeah. And Jesus said, by chance, there came down that road. And incidentally, this seems to have been the main route uh, between community and church. And uh, they came uh, down that road, uh, a priest, uh, a preacher, if you please. Uh, that does not uh, endear my heart too much to think that a preacher conducted himself that way, but he did. He looked at the man, he passed on the other side, and left the man in his condition. But uh, psychologically, he asked himself question, uh, because he saw how suspicious the road looked, and he asked the question, if I go and, and, and get down and help this man, the thieves may be hiding in the bushes. Uh, and they may come out as soon as I start ministering to him and attack me. 
So if I go and help this man, the question is, what's going to happen to me? And that is so often that thing that prevent us from doing what we ought to do for others. Uh, we're concerned about what going to happen to me. Well, the Lord has, uh, has fixed that and, and told us to not worry about it, but let proud to be helping others. Well, while I'm on the story, there was another man who many theologians that represent the office of the church uh, of the, of the priest and um, a Levite and uh, he, he looked on the man and asked the same question that the priest did if I go and help him what's going to happen to me as long as we stop at that question we won't get much done in life as far as serving humanity uh, we have a task to serve this present age but there was uh, another man who uh, by virtue of his nationality uh, he was not uh, well thought of he was Samaritan he'd probably be on the level of the Negro in America uh, he wasn't thought a lot of. He did not have a lot of uh, resources historically. And he saw the man, and he reversed that question. He said, if I don't go and help that man, what's going to happen to him? And that's where it is, that we have to be concerned about others. He said, if I refuse, take my resources. I refuse to take my horse and put him on my uh, mode of transportation. If I refuse to take my oil and minister to his wounds, <coughs> if I refuse to, to just put my ear down to his mouth and just hear his pain and, and the sorrow that he's experiencing, because I'm sure this is a traumatic experience that he's had. And he has something to say. And before I can help him, I've got to listen to him. And so he listened to him and put him on his horse and put all on him and carried him to an end and said to them, uh, this is my friend. I want you to take care of him. Uh, I want you to give him housing, clothing, I keep him warm. And I'm traveling, and when I come back this way, whatever uh, that you spent more than I'm giving you now, I'll take care of it. And then Jesus switched the question around and said, which do you think, who do you think was neighborly? And of course the man answered his own question by saying, uh, the one that aided him, the one that went to his assistance. Now, you know, it's, it's always, the, the truth of the matter is, even though uh, these guys asked these questions, it was, it was kind of a legitimate question. When you look at it, you are helping a stranger, you're helping them in a strange place. Something could have happened to them. But they set all of that aside for others. Yeah. They set all of that aside to do what's right. You know, being a native of this county, uh, a pastor of uh, 48 years, I, I know uh, the Jericho Road experience. It is a uh, little job here tonight. Leonard, I, I don't, okay, all right. Uh, the reason I asked about Leonard Job, something uh, crossed my mind that has happened in my experience. And uh, you're talking about asking questions and being misunderstood. We've come a long ways in Edgecombe County. Uh, and uh, there are some things I wish I could say today, but uh, some of you would think they will be unnecessary. But I will say them because it happened. <laughs> it, it's nothing I'm making up. Amen. Uh, I'm that guy that one leader of this uh, uh, community say, well, didn't deserve to be on earth. 
Uh, and uh, I, I sort of took that as a threat, as to say that uh, knowing that Martin Luther King had been killed, the, the, uh, uh, the Kennedys had been killed, uh, I could have gotten real concerned, but somehow or another, God and those who served lift the fear. But I asked about jobs because there's been many spirits I've had in my many years in this uh, community. But I shared my congregation uh, and the spirits that took place in the mid 70s in Rocky Mountain uh, that helped me to relate to Martin Luther King more than any other spirits. It, it has to, had to do with garbage workers. Um, one of my friends that I admired, I admired his spirit, I admired uh, uh, his faith. Uh, Mr. Edwards uh, of Whitakers was working with the um, Rockland Sanitation Department. And one morning, you never know when an historical event will happen to you. One minute morning while doing his job, he ran into something that transformed the life of uh, the Rocky Mountain community. Mr. Edwin was a missionary. Uh, he was one who thought of others. Uh, he had in his garage uh, a clothes closet where uh, people had a way that uh, they didn't want something. Uh, uh, they, 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 got, they have many ways of uh, discarding those things now, but back in that day, the main way they did was just put it by the trash can. And so Mr. Evans went there that morning, and uh, there was some clothes by the trash can. And so he carried them home and hung them up, prepared to uh, give them to the needy family. And uh, um, upon doing that, uh, the, the person's house that was at, they discovered their clothes were not there. And they went to the city manager. And they said to the city manager, said, uh, your workers uh, came by my house, stole my clothes. <laughs> and uh, so the city manager, she made it clear that she had put the clothes by the trash can. Uh, well, if you put clothes by the trash can, historically, you know, it's trapped. <laughs> so somehow or another, the city manager didn't look into it. And as he should have, allowed her to go by him and take a warrant out on Mr. Evans. Uh, Mr. Evans subsequently lost his job. And, uh, but I, I'm trying to tell you something about others. Amen. Because we can read uh, historically about Rosa Parks, who refused to get up in a bus where she was paying the same fee that uh, other whites were paying, but the rule was when whites come on the bus, the blacks had to get up. Amen. Uh, do you know in that day when that happened, as that occurred, that a lot of folk thought Rosa Parks was wrong, hmm. including a lot of black folk. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> in fact, when Martin Luther King was marching, I heard my own mother uh, say, she was a darling woman, but her and the, her, her sisters and some of her brothers and some of the neighbors said, that nigga gonna get all of us killed. He need to get somewhere, <laughs> he need to get somewhere and uh, uh, sit down. I mean, they looking at the TV and, and they're putting dogs on us and they're locking us up and they've got water holes. Many people are not able to make that transition when things happen, when we're in the midst of discrimination and injustice. Oh, oh, when when they when it's over, everybody is my little king friend. Oh yeah, in fact, that's right. For a long time right. in this country, you couldn't find two people. You couldn't find mm. a black person that didn't love Martin Luther King. And you couldn't find a white person that voted for Nixon uh, for a long time. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that there were blacks that, that didn't understand King. They probably some now, but anyway, listen, and I'll be, be finished in a minute, but, but they sent him to, to jail, and I had a knock on my door. Um, about, that's why I asked about jobs. 
there were about 14 uh, sanitation workers that came and knocked on the door. They told me the story. And they said, Reverend, we are literally afraid to do our job. Because if that happened to him, it can happen to us. And that was almost the same time, almost, uh, that, uh, well, it was after Martin Luther King had gone to Memphis with the uh, sanitation workers there. And I prayed about that, and the Lord said to me, if these men have the courage, to stand for themselves, right. you will be less than my preacher and not to stand with him. Amen. Needless to say, I was the only preacher <laughs> that, that, that stood. Others were critical. The other uh, lay people were critical. I had preachers from all over this country, and when we really started moving, called me and said, Walker, you're going to mess yourself up. <laughs> dealing with these garbage workers. Right. You know, I found out something. I found out that hard hat people, people, blue collar folk, are uh, the one that really makes the difference in the community. Mm. Right. You, you, you let the mayor don't show up for work. Right. Who cares? Let <laughs> <laughs> the city council not come. And let some other department not come. Who cares? But when the hard hat Garbage worker refused to pick up garbage. The whole city uh, got along. And while they, not everybody wanted to struggle with them, I called Giles' name, and he was one of the ringleaders, one of the guys who kept the people motivated. Long story is they refused to pick up garbage, and uh, the city came to a halt. They had to sit outside to get other sources to pick up garbage. Uh, city manager, bless his heart, he's gone on now. He looked like he lived at City Hall. Uh, he had not shaved. Uh, uh, didn't look like he had even been home go take a bath. He was, I was afraid to get close to him. Uh, these, these sanitation workers uh, who people consider as nobodies. Mm -hmm. so. They were somebody. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Martin Luther King said, it, it falls your lot to be a street sweeper. That's right. Sweep that, that street, as Michelangelo painted the picture, sweep that street so well that, that the whole world will say, here lived a great street sweeper oh, yeah. who swept his job well. If you cannot uh, be a tree, just be a shrub in the valley. Amen. But be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. Wherever we are, if we serve others, if we stick together, well, they, they, they stuck together. And to make a long story short, uh, that's probably already too long. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, we, we were against several systems against the courts. The courts have made up their mind. We're against the political system. We're against the economic system. Uh, but uh, when you stand for others, those systems began to give in. They try to save face, but they try to, they give in also. A case that would have taken two or three months to get to court. They got that on in court in a couple of weeks. And I remember that time in court, the citizens from all over Nash Edgecombe County met in the courthouse and uh, some gentlemen that you know now, uh, sometimes we like to forget history, but history is the most valuable assets we have. Uh, Judge Quentin Sumner was a lawyer then, a courageous lawyer. Uh, Tony Lance was a lawyer, they were all practicing together. Robert Evans. These were our very good marshals, and they marched us through the process. And I remember when we got to court, uh, they had uh, organized this thing so well. In the midst of the court session, uh, somebody came in with a, a TV, a floor model of TVs. You don't see them much now. And uh, the judge said, where y'all going with that TV and where do you get it from? 
And the fellow said, we got it off the trash can. <laughs> Somebody put it out there because they, they want to get rid of it. The judge took his gaffer and he hit, uh, hit, his, uh, table, hit the table and said, this case is dismissed. Hmm. And the courthouse of practice like this is went up and praised. And then he started hitting it again. He was hitting it and hit it, trying to make a point hit that he should have kept that hit. But uh, uh, when he finally got out, he said, order, 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 order. I'm ashamed that you all would think he wasn't going to get any justice from this court. And those uh, folk, both black and white, got up and walked out of that court saying, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Well, uh, we knew we had not arrived yet, Amen. that that was a, a battle won, Amen. but it was not a total victory. And it's still not a total victory. Amen. But I want to say to us as I close today, that if we're going to uh, win the, the victory with all that's happening in our world today, Corruption seemed to be all the way from the outhouse to the White House, where 44 is up there saying everything he can say. Uh, that's wrong. Talking about Africa and Haiti and everybody else. Uh, Haiti and everybody else. Uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, keep the dream alive. Don't, don't take it. I can even say don't take it personal. But think of it in terms of others. Because even our white brothers and sisters, some who uh, may not have agreed with what was going on in the 60s, uh, as far as we are uh, struggling for our civil and human rights, many have been converted, their minds have changed. And I might say parenthetically, if it wasn't for some of our white brothers and sisters, we would not have succeeded. And so if you find yourself in another ethnic group and you see us continue to lift up Martin Luther King and his legacy and and his creeds and his uh, uh, teaching, uh, uh, go somewhere and pray and, and let it saturate into your soul. Because the scriptures say, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the truth of the matter is that we are able to do our best when our best is for others. God bless you.